Germany's navy is about to make a quiet but strategically loud move. It is preparing to buy MQ-9B Sea Guardian drones for long-range maritime reconnaissance and, crucially, anti-submarine warfare. On paper, this looks like a procurement story with a long timeline and a large price tag. In reality, it is a signal about how Berlin reads the underwater threat environment in the North Sea and the Baltic, how it wants to plug capability gaps created by years of delayed programs, and how NATO is reshaping maritime surveillance around persistent networked sensing rather than episodic patrols. The plan is straightforward in structure but revealing in intent. Germany will receive four systems, and each system includes two MQ-9B Sea Guardian unmanned aircraft plus the associated command and control and supporting components. That translates into eight air vehicles overall, with basing planned at the Naval Air Station in Nordholz. The estimated contract value, according to well-informed sources cited in the report, sits around 1.52 billion euros and covers more than the aircraft themselves. Spare parts and service packages, including crew training, are bundled for an initial two-year operating period. Funding is split between special funds and the regular defense budget, and the Bundestag's budget committee has already approved the financing under the project name UMOS, the unmanned component of a maritime airborne system. The acquisition will be managed through NATO's support and procurement agency, which will administer the contract with the manufacturer on Germany's behalf. Deliveries are scheduled for 2028 to 2030, while the specifically anti-submarine configuration is expected later in 2031 and 2032. So why does this matter and why now? Because anti-submarine warfare is not a niche Cold War relic. It is one of the most unforgiving competitions in modern military affairs. A submarine does not need to win a battle to achieve strategic effect. It only needs to remain uncertain. The mere possibility that an adversary boat is operating in a given area can force rerouting, slow down reinforcement flows and tie down scarce escort assets. In a European theatre where sea lanes are the arteries for logistics, energy infrastructure and military mobility, underwater ambiguity is a weapon all on its own. And the Baltic and the North Sea are not empty oceans. They are congested, shallow in places, cluttered with civilian traffic and threaded with critical seabed infrastructure. That is exactly the kind of environment where persistent surveillance, rapid queuing and wide area pattern recognition become more valuable than heroic one-off sorties. This is where the Sea Guardian proposition becomes interesting. Germany is not just buying a drone. It is buying time on station and time on station is the currency of maritime awareness. A crewed maritime patrol aircraft is extremely capable but it is also expensive to keep in the air continuously and its presence is often episodic. It arrives, conducts a mission and leaves. A high-endurance, unmanned aircraft can loiter for extended periods, watch shipping patterns, revisit suspicious contacts, and maintain sensor coverage through the slow, methodical work that maritime domain awareness actually requires. And once you have that persistent eye, the entire kill chain changes. You move from searching the ocean to monitoring it, from reacting to events to shaping them. The anti-submarine angle is the most politically sensitive and operationally consequential part of this purchase. The report notes that for ASW missions, the Sea Guardian can carry under its wings between two and four devices for deploying sonobuoys. That detail is small, but it matters, because it suggests Germany is not treating these drones as mere cameras over water. Sonobuoys are the connective tissue of modern ASW, they turn the ocean into a distributed sensor field. But deploying buoys is only one part of the problem. The real question is what happens next? Who processes the acoustic data? How is it fused with other inputs, surface radar tracks, electronic emissions, historical patterns, allied queuing, to produce a track you can act on? And once you have a credible track, which platform prosecutes it? In Germany's case, that question inevitably points to the broader fleet mix, including crewed maritime patrol aircraft, surface combatants, and helicopters. In other words, the Sea Guardian is not a standalone solution. It is a node that makes the whole system more coherent if Germany invests in the integration and the infrastructure. That last caveat is not academic. A German defense politician, Bastian Ernst, explicitly warned that while the timelines look ambitious, Berlin must not forget the infrastructure needed to operate these systems in parallel with procurement. That is the real trap with high-tech unmanned systems. The air vehicle is often the easiest part. The hard parts are ground control stations, secure communications, trained operators, maintenance pipelines, certification regimes, airspace integration, and the doctrinal shift required to treat unmanned persistence as a primary tool rather than a novelty. If Germany wants these drones to contribute meaningfully to ASW, it also needs to build the workflows and command relationships that turn buoy drops into actionable decisions, not just interesting data. The timeline also tells its own story about urgency and compromise. Deliveries are planned for 2028-2030 and ASW upgrades later in 2031-2032.
That suggests Germany is prioritizing maritime reconnaissance first, getting the persistent surveillance layer up and running, then layering in the more complex ASW configuration once integration and concept of operations mature. It also reflects the reality that ASW is a system of systems problem with higher certification and interoperability demands, and it underlines a broader European pattern. States are trying to close capability gaps quickly with off-the-shelf solutions, while longer-term cooperative programs struggle under politics, industrial competition, and diverging threat perceptions. Which brings us to the ghost in the room, MORS. For years, MORS was the label for a Franco-German initiative to modernize maritime surveillance, but the partners could not align on a unified approach. Germany ultimately moved ahead with purchasing the crude P8A Poseidon as what was described as an interim MORS solution. In that context, UMOS is both a workaround and an evolution. It is Berlin acknowledging that maritime surveillance cannot wait for perfect multinational alignment, and it is also Germany adapting to a future where crewed aircraft and unmanned persistence are complementary rather than competing answers. There is also a coalition logic here, and Germany is saying it out loud. The Navy has highlighted expected synergy effects with partner countries like the United Kingdom and Canada that also operate the MQ-9B family. That matters because modern maritime surveillance is increasingly about shared architectures, common training pipelines, shared sustainment lessons, interoperable data links, and a quicker path to upgrades because multiple users are pushing the same baseline forward. When you are trying to field a system on an ambitious schedule, being part of an operator community is a force multiplier. It reduces risk, speeds learning, and makes your concept of operations less lonely. But the strategic question remains, what does Germany actually gain the moment these drones become operational? First, it gains persistence over choke points, sea lanes, and areas of interest, allowing it to build a high-resolution baseline of normal maritime behavior. Second, it gains faster detection of anomalies, ships that loiter, patterns that shift, contacts that do not fit, creating cues for higher-end assets. Third, it gains an ASW scaffolding that can be scaled. Deploying sonar buoys from an unmanned platform changes how you think about coverage and responsiveness, especially when you can sustain that presence without burning through the finite fatigue limits of air crews. And finally, it gains political signaling, a visible investment in maritime security that aligns with NATO's renewed focus on the North Atlantic and the European littorals. Still, the most important question is not whether MQ 9 BC Guardian is capable. The question is whether Germany will treat this as a transformative node in a networked maritime system or as a procurement checkbox. Will the data be fused and acted upon at speed? Will the infrastructure and training keep pace with the airframes? Will the unmanned and crewed pieces be integrated into a single operational picture shared with allies in real time? Because in ASW, capability is not what you own, it is what you can sustain, integrate, and exploit day after day in the gray zone between peace and crisis, where the ocean never stops moving and the most dangerous targets are the ones you cannot see, 